This is a short video I shot of a modification to my Airstream uh, 20FB. It's a 2022. And uh, I installed 315 watts of solar on the roof and a MultiPlus 3000 VA inverter charger, four 100 amp hour life blue batteries, all under the bed. So common questions are, can I run the air conditioner? The answer is, I can, for about one hour per battery. So about four hours of air conditioning if I decide to do that. Other questions are, can you run the air conditioner and the microwave at the same time? And the answer is yes, the Multi Plus can do that. In fact, it can overproduce 3,000, more than 3,000 uh, volt amps for short periods of time. So the inrush of the compressor can be carried even if the microwave is on. Other questions are, how much solar do I need? How much battery do I need if I want to boondock? So for 21 days, from March 1st through March 21st, we went to Arizona and never plugged in. Even at the KOA, even at the campground, and when we boondocked, the solar sun, very bright every day in the southwest, replenished our batteries no matter how much energy we consumed. Uh, the, of course, the refrigerator was on all the time. We never conserved energy, never worried about that because we, we recharged. Uh, so boondocking would be electrically in perpetuity. However, water and uh, wastewater would become an issue eventually. So here's my video of the installation. Oh, one last question always asked, how much? I spent about $8,000. However, about a thousand of that were was tools and and things I needed to to do the correct installation. So I would think that it was about if I had to do it again, same configuration, having the tools, seven thousand. So here's the video. Okay, this is a quick summary of a modification of my 2022 20 FB Airstream trailer, and this modification did several things. Number one. I installed a 3000 VA multi plus inverter charger for 100 amp hour lithium batteries by LifeBlue heated. A new MPPT controller for the solar on the roof, which now is 315 watts. An Orion DC to DC charger the isolated version but it's in a non-isolated configuration this is for the uh, charge wire through the seven pin connector i use the uh, link system by victron for termination used a shunt this is the bmv shunt uh the display i'll show you in a minute along with a battery protect a 100 amp battery protect device that uh, will turn off when the batteries are too low. Master on off switch, along with some various uh, bus bars and uh, breaker. This is for the solar, to disconnect the solar. A couple disconnects here. One is the uh, charger from the uh, Orion. The other is the charger from the MultiPlus that allow me to isolate that. Here's some of the wiring that I installed. And they're gonna head over to the closet I'll show you the servo. This is the uh, beautiful factory wiring from Airstream. They should absolutely be ashamed of themselves. This is ridiculous. Now, I've gone in and re-terminated. I've not dressed the wires, but literally, if you have a problem with a circuit, a DC circuit, where the fuse is okay, but the circuit doesn't work, inspect a white wire being loose in this location. In addition, I did some additional circuit protection using some DC breakers along with a uh, meter that tells me the draw from the shore. Kind of cool. I also used the AC2 output for a uh, separate receptacle down here. Orange wires are the interception and the feed from the house 115 volt. Let me show you that uh, connection.
This is where you intercept the shore power feed. That's an orange wire from the shore connector. You send the orange wire to the inverter, return similar size orange wire and splice it into the old feed to your converter. And you can route the wires using that chase down there with a the fish tape. As far as the converter goes, one important thing to remember is you have to disconnect the charging wire to its old charger because it's no longer used. It's also all the wiring for the control system routes through the uh, closet to a panel that I built covering the Serbo GX. Its wiring then routes up underneath the closet through a hole to another box which protects the backside of, wait for it, these devices, which are a GX50 display showing the consumption of current, use of batteries, solar charge, a lot of other goodies. I'm going to delve into that right now. Since at the time I had to use the BMV 712, I received a display, which is kind of redundant because it's, it's shown right there. In addition, I installed a multi-panel, multi-control panel. And what this does, this is a nice feature. It's wife friendly. I can adjust the um, maximum allowable current from shore, which right now is uh, set up to 15. So, and all of a sudden we go into absorption mode because we now have the ability to draw a little more current. This is the on off switch for the inverter, charger only. Very, very wife friendly. In fact, this isn't necessary because everything's Bluetooth readable with my phone. However, it's a nice display, quick display. Oh, by the way, not related to Victron, but here's a Mopeka. Uh, propane tank unit. It's an ultra, it does uh, sonar, essentially, on your two tanks. Notice the tank two is a little empty. Kind of cool. I also forgot, a uh, little forgot to mention, that I installed a uh, continuous piano hinge, six-foot hinge, on the bed so that I could access the equipment. <laughs> 